one who ran into Connie walked away feeling better about their day and life in general. Through Don Wells, who I consider my mentor as then Acadia's athletic director, Connie was one of the first people I met when we moved to the Valley in 1997. We golfed weekly and he dropped down to my office often. I know Connie was disappointed when I left Acadia to return back to Saskatchewan to coach, but I knew it was only because Connie lived and breathed that Acadia hockey was the best program in the world at any level. Upon my return as athletic director at Acadia, Connie was immediately the most welcoming. Way beyond that, he has provided solicited counsel and periodically found an instinctively tactful way to keep me abreast of what his ear to the tracks was telling him. I love those times. Six of us had one of the most enjoyable nights last September at Jim Logue's. It was the wrap up to our Nacho Club golf season with Tom Prescott and Bill Parker and included Dave Matart and Connie who were on the golfing DL. I can't describe how much fun it was. I probably should keep this to myself, but I saw Connie the next day. And the first thing he said was, you know, I really had a hard time finding the door handle of my house last night. How about you? I laughed and replied, imagine me having a garage door keypad. I'm so pleased that Connie finally agreed to be inducted into our Acadia Sport Hall of Fame in 2011. And he and his wonderful family were able to enjoy him being recognized as a special athlete and contributor to Acadia Athletics. Connie made a point of letting our present student athletes know that he didn't participate in university sport to become a Hall of Famer or legend. His speech was humbling, and I know it inspired our kids to realize that by doing the right thing in sport, in the sport they love and the community, they could make a significant difference for others and even a university. I know we will find an appropriate manner again to honor and celebrate the legacy of Connie. It's been overwhelming the contacts our alumni of all eras have had with me and us since Connie's passing. Even our present student athletes. Connie was connected with so many alumni classes, groups and people. I'm suggesting that if you polled a cross section of people asking the question, who is Acadia University's most storied alumni, Connie McNeil would win. My calendar says I'm having breakfast with Connie Tuesday at 8.15 a.m. I sure wish that was still happening. I'd have laughed, learned, and like I said earlier, Connie would have made my day better. Sincerely, Kevin Dickey. Connie has so many wonderful friends, all with their unique stories and memories. And I'm pleased at this time to welcome one of Connie's dear friends, Mr. Tom Prescott, Acadia class of 58. I am honored to have known Connie McNeil for over 35 years. I remember well the first time I met Connie we had just arrived here from Port Hawkesbury, Cape Breton in the fall of 1977 and my good friend Bill Parker introduced us at an Acadia Axman hockey game. Connie impressed me as someone I wanted to know better and thus began a wonderful friendship. We were newcomers to Wolfville and Connie personally opened many doors for us as new members of the community. Connie invited and encouraged me to join the Wolfville Old Timers hockey team. A wonderful collection of characters who had a great time playing hockey, and many of them are here today. I learned a lot about camaraderie from these guys, and I have many stories and great memories from our times together. Shirley and I became close friends with Connie and Mert, enjoyed many pleasant evenings, playing bridge together. Our games always required five players. There was the usual four players and one other. It was either old Sam or Captain Morgan. <laughs> Connie was an unforgettable person with a tremendous sense of humor. Anyone who met him never forgot him. 
In November 1979, Connie and I attended the Grey Cup game in Montreal. We arranged to stay in the same hotel as several of my friends from Temiskaming, Quebec, where I had lived previously. Needless to say, we had a great weekend, and Connie entertained everyone with unlimited number of stories to tell a brand new audience. In, ho in later years, when I returned to Temiskaming, these guys never failed to ask me about Connie and always said to say hello. He was truly unforgettable to all of them. Connie was a great organizer, and he was the key figure in creating the Acadia Axeman Blue Line Club. He visited with the uh, Moncton Blue Eagles Booster Club in Moncton and gained enough information to form the Acadia Axeman Blue Line Club with the primary objective of providing financial support to the Acadia hockey program. This proved to be successful and subsequently Connie assisted with the formation of the backcourt club, the quarterback club, and a club to support women's sports at Acadia, all with the same primary objective and all operating within the guidelines of the CIS. These were all testimonies of, to Connie's dedication and determination to help these programs to become successful. Connie was inducted into the Acadia Hockey Honor Roll in 1984 and subsequently served on the nominating committee. Many former Axemen can thank Connie for having their names carved into this wooden plaque. Connie also served on the nominating committee for the Acadia Sports Hall of Fame. For several decades, I had submitted his name as a nominee for this honor but several year, year, years passed without an approval of his nomination. This concerned me, and following an investigation, I discovered that although the majority of the committee had approved Connie's induction, he showed his modesty and unselfishness by refusing to accept the honor while he was still a member of the nominating committee. Eventually, I managed to convince Connie to resign from the committee by explaining that he was not only depriving himself of a very great honor, but was also denying his family, which by then included two grandsons, Dustin and Madison, of the opportunity to see him so honored. A few months later, Connie retired from the committee and subsequently was inducted as a builder on September 17, 2011, to the Acadia Sports Hall of Fame. Connie was intent on helping others. He would set aside time to spend with people, especially those having health problems. Examples of this are far too numerous to mention, but I personally will never forget, never, will be forever grateful for the patience and kindness he showed me. As an athlete, Connie always strived to be the best he could possibly be. We will all remember him as an exceptional hockey player with a smooth skating style. He played a great game of handball and racquetball, and, we, remember, and we'll, we will remember him of late for his golfing prowess. I understand that he's been a member of the Kenwell Golf Club for 50 years. He started the Friday morning group, affectionately named the Weezers by son Andy, and the Weezers Weezers were all out again yesterday, as usual, and I'm sure Connie was with us in spirit. Connie was the proud Cape Bretoner and never forgot his humble roots and solid foundation he acquired growing up in his hometown that he affectionately referred to as Reverse Minds. <laughs> Connie's, Connie's faith and belief in God were very strong and he was very active in church activities. He worked hard on behalf of the community and he was the glue that kept people working together to maintain good relations between the town, Acadia University, as well as the surrounding communities. Connie was a great supporter of the underdog and he was ultimately rewarded in the last provincial election with an NDP victory. Connie, I know you are with us here today and are probably embarrassed by this tribute. So rest well, good buddy. You deserve it.
Thank you very much, Tom. The Acadia Hockey Program recognizes the contributions of its student athlete group in many ways, whether it's the hockey on a roll, an alumni event, or in countless other ways. Only once in the program's history has the jersey of a former player been retired. We raised to the Acadia Arena Rafters number 22 in tribute of the late Kevin Powell in 2002. Today, I'm proud to announce that the Acadia Hockey Axeman will recognize the many contributions of Connie McNeil to its program as a player, volunteer, and mentor. On Sunday, October 20th, during a special ceremony here prior to a varsity hockey game at Acadia Arena, Connie's number six will be officially retired. Connie's life started on Cape Breton Island, and as you can well imagine, many family trips were spent back home. Mert and Connie and their four children loved summers on the Myra. Connie loved music, and it's only fitting that this next song is performed here today. Please welcome to the stage Ryan and Scott Hupman and Kim Matheson as they sing Song for the Myra.
How very special it is in a celebration of one's life to have immediate family wanting to reminisce, telling some of their favorite stories on this a day of story and song. Brad, who I introduced to you earlier as son-in-law, wrote these words. I recall my father-in-law being a gentle man who was able to command a certain level of respect while at the same time obviously having a big heart. His smile and positive attitude were characteristics that I found reassuring as a young student. Brad indicates, shares with us that he was with Connie in the ICU just hours before Connie passed away. Connie was still smiling, talking with Brad as if he'd see him again tomorrow. Brad is thankful for the past 10 years for he was blessed with a father-in-law, a mentor, a true friend, and will miss him for a long time to come. Thank you for those wonderful words, Brad. <clears throat> Well, it's the eve of Father's Day. And this beautiful gift to Connie are some of the stories and the remembrances of his sons and daughter who pay tribute. I invite you to listen to the stories, of course, but I also invite you to seek to find within those words clues that will reveal to you the incredible depth and intimacy of their love for their dad. <clears throat> Margie writes, not long after my father passed away, I was grocery shopping one evening with my husband Brad. Without second, second guessing it, I found the greeting card section and began looking through the Father's Day cards. I think I decided at that moment I would buy a card for Dad each and every time his birthday or Father's Day came around. This card to me, she says, was perfect. It read, a good man chooses to do what is right. He places importance on family. A good man changes the world by his own example. He shapes the lives of his children with the strength of his love. That's Connie. Thank you, Dad, for being such a good man, for loving me strong and raising me right. I love you too. And I hope today you feel it. <coughs> Margie. Son David. I can remember waking from a bad dream when I was a child. I was really excited when I first read this and said, okay, where does this go? I would make that long run from my bed to my parents' room. Once I was cuddled up with mom and dad, I knew it was the safest place on the earth, and whatever monsters there were chasing me, they were now rendered powerless. 
When I laid my head on dad's arm, I knew then what I know now. My dad is something very special. Love, Dave. <coughs> Andy writes, Imagine early 1970s, an old Chevy station wagon, a young phys ed teacher with his four kids in tow on what was supposed to be his day off. On weekends, my father often would take us to the old Horton School to keep us busy while he finished his work from the previous week or to get ready for the next. Whether he was lining the fields or doing paperwork, my siblings and I would have the run of the gymnasium and the multi-purpose room to play whichever sport we desired that day. Often we would run a few errands before heading to the school. And more often than not, during those errands, my father would run into a friend, which would, in turn, lead to what seemed to us to be a very lengthy chat. <laughs> that, of course, meant that the four anxious kids in the old station wagon were chomping at the bit. And if there happened to be a third person join in on that conversation, absolute torture. <clears throat> Suffice to say, we were always in a hurry to get our errands done and to get to school. Years later, we remember a quote from one of us, Dad, can you please not stop and talk to anyone today? Well, how could we have known that this would be like asking him to change the very core of his being, the biggest part of who he was? He was a part of the community and always would be. Even with all the accomplishments in my father's life, I believe that these were not what defined him. What defined him were the friendships that he made throughout his life. I believe every one of you here is proof of that. I didn't realize what my father's friendships would mean to me until after he was gone. I'm so glad that he had so many people in his life that really knew him and appreciated him for who he was. And I am thankful that so many of those friends could share this day with us. I've always been both proud, I've always been proud to be both his son and friend. I'll miss him every day. Love, Andy. Philip, whatever it was that we were doing together, I always felt like I was hanging out with my best friend. What more needs to be said? I was so lucky enough to be able to call him also my dad, Philip. <clears throat> well, we offer thanks to you for sharing with us the intimacy profound intimacy of your relationship with your dad and your friend. You've inspired us to spend time, as was asked of us earlier today, to go away from this celebration and offer time to remember our stories, the ways that we knew Connie related to him, and we will always treasure and, and hope to follow in the days and years to come. to change the tone just a little bit. Coal mining played a large part in Connie's life growing up in what this paper calls reserve mines in Gay Breton. Connie's ability to focus and maintain a healthy work ethic was due in a large part to watching his mother Mabel and his father George provide for five boys of which Connie was the eldest. 
George, a commissioned coal miner, was paid by the ton of which he moved many. He started in the coal mine at the tender age of 13 and retired at the age of 60. George was a big, strong man and had to shovel the coal from his knees because the ceiling of the coal mine was so low. After a long day uh, at work, after a long work day, Mabel would spend evenings patching the worn out knees in George's pants and on wash day was known to tear clothing with the wringing out of the water. Mabel had therefore no problem keeping those five, five boys in line. In honor of those parents Connie had so much love and admiration for, now I introduce and welcome Ryan and Scott Hupman with Kim Matheson, who will now play a rendition of Matt Anderson's Coal Mining Blues. on my heart. 